Hey everybody, welcome back to Naturally Supernatural. I hope you guys enjoyed our last episode on key to unlocking success. And from that episode, we did talk about a bit about managing and how to really steward what we're given. And I know towards the end, Pastor Tom, you had talked about work and purpose, mentioned about it, but we didn't really get to dive deeper into it. Um, So for today, I just wanted to know, and hopefully the listeners as well, in regards to work and purpose and how our design is and how God actually planned it in the beginning. Um, Can you give us more detail on the importance of what work is, how that plays a role in our purpose, Mm. and just even our daily life? Yeah, good question, Joyce, uh, to your question about personal life and all that like you know first we always have to go back to the book of genesis Mm -hmm. which is my favorite uh, (laughs) book genesis yeah genesis (laughs) chapter one and genesis chapter two yes basically i don't even go to genesis chapter three that's when that's when everything went sideways (laughs) everyone downhill from there yeah everything went south uh but genesis one and two is where the original plan was set Mm -hmm. by god and the way god design it and if you go to genesis chapter 2 mm-hmm. i believe it's verse 1 to 15 if you read from there mm-hmm. maybe we should read <clears throat> if you can read from genesis totally uh, yeah i have the niv version here okay so genesis 2 verse 1 to 15 thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array by the seventh day god had finished the work he had been doing so on the seventh day he rested from all his work Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up from For the Lord God had not sent the rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface on the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Verse 8. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he had put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there, it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Phison. It winds through the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Amen. <clears throat> if you read that passage again, like at home, you will find the word work, work. The first half, of, <laughs> like the almost more than half of that was about God working. Yeah. You know, God worked six days and then he rested on the seventh day. Mm. Right? He called it the Sabbath. And so he made this garden right and people think it's a place but actually it's his presence because the word eden is actually it's like a spot a presence spot of god literally and with that he put man after he created man and he didn't send rain he said he didn't send rain because all the seeds were there but he didn't send rain yet because there was no man to work the garden and we talk about how the word work is iragon in Hebrew means to manage the mm. garden. So if you send rain uh, and the seeds will sprout and then things will start growing out of control because there's no man to yeah. manage um, the garden. So when God speaks that, he's speaking prophetically. Like, you know, he's talking about work when you're in a very different way than what we think work is because work, when we read in English, is just work. But in Hebrew is management. Management mm. of what? Man- management of his dominion. He gave the dominion to to, to man, to, to Adam. Mm. But it is still his rule. It is still his law. Mm. 
everything works according to how he said it to work. Mm. And we're supposed to manage it. We're supposed to just be the manager of what he owns. If you're the manager, you you're managing somebody else's assets. You know, you're managing somebody else's personal property. Mm. And God's mm. personal property is actually his presence. Wow. He, he's like, it is all in him and everything came through him. So basically when he was in the garden, <clears throat> they were supposed to manage everything that he already set up for them to manage. Mm-hmm. Basically the work that was given to them was something that he already set before time began. You can read that in uh, Ephesians. Mm. I believe it's 2.10. But you can read that. And he, he already set all those ready. But the thing is, he wanted man to work it. Because mm. in the physical earth, is the extension of his invisible kingdom here. He needed a physical man to work it. And that's why he made Adam. So there's something prophetic about that whole passage. Okay, number one, you find that God worked, 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 worked six days and right. then he rested. On the mm-hmm. seventh day, right? And then, <clears throat> so the ratio here is, is six mm. to one. Yeah. Six days of working, one day of rest. Now, if we try to apply that as to your question, are we doing that in our lives? So mm. good. If we believe that we have the deposit of the Holy Spirit in us, we actually have Eden with us. Wow. Come on. We, we actually have the presence of God with us everywhere that we go. Everywhere that we step is Eden. Everywhere that we go, God is with us. So how come, how come, my question is, that we only work on the Sunday when we go to church. We try to evangelize, try to bring people into church. And mm. we don't work outside of the context of church. Wow. So you're actually working one day, and resting six. That's the total wow. opposite of what God was trying to model for us. He was modeling a six working day and a one resting day. And we are resting six days and working one. One day. Wow. So, it's, you know, for years I was thinking, what has happened to the church? Mm. And when I had this revelation, I'm going, oh, that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. So, Many times when we don't um, we don't realize that, we think that going to work is a big chore. Or we think that, you mm. know, like, you know, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you go to work first thing Monday morning, you're complaining already. Before you even sat down, you're complaining. You know, you're doing this, you're doing that. You're like, oh man, I can't. I can't get going until I drink two, three cups of coffee because I, this is so boring. <laughs> but... The fact of the matter is you are a glory carrier. You have Mm. God in you. And God is the one that's actually paying you to evangelize. God is the one that's paying you to be a witness at your workplace. So sometimes when we work just within the context of church, we think just witnessing means we continually thumb people with the Bible or shout, you know, like... You know, Jesus did this, Jesus, every other word is Jesus. But I'm just saying, no. You, you know how when you work, you work in excellence. Mm-hmm. When you work in excellence, you draw out the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And when you do that, when you do that, people actually can see Eden. People can actually see the presence of God in you. So give you an example. When, when Jesus worked on earth, he was like, you know, he he. Where did he get his twelve disciples from? He didn't get them from the synagogue. He didn't go into a synagogue and say, "Hey, we, we, who among you want to come follow me? Be fishers yeah. of men." So no, good. he went into the workplace. Yeah. He went into the marketplace and he saw these guys fishing. Fish market. Yeah, and what was what was uh, Peter's work? A fisherman. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right? What was Jesus's work? Carpenter. <laughs> A carpenter. He probably a carpenter. was a carpenter. When he showed up at Peter's workplace, he showed Peter excellence. Yeah. You know, when Peter said, you know, I couldn't catch yeah. a single fish. Not on this side, yeah. Yeah. And then he said, no, no, let's go push this boat further. Let's go push yeah. this boat further out. And then you cast it on the right side. And then when he did that, the net was so filled with fish and the net was tearing. And when they 
they brought the fish on board, the boat was sinking. That's how many fish they were bringing in. And then they had to call their friends, extra boats, to actually get those fish as well. So that tells me Jesus, when he went there, he showed them a greater work. Come on. You know, like in excellence. He showed that kingdom. In the kingdom, the fish swim in the net. In religion, you use the net to try to fish for fish. Mm. Are you following me? This this excites me, Pastor. You know, 10 minutes in, just you just sharing those revelations, those reminders. It reminds me that there is that difference between our daily jobs and what we consider work. To be able to, to really break this down, I feel like many of us has an understanding or a definition of what work is that sometimes gets mixed up from what you just told us. Understanding that, hey, it's six days of work with, with rest, not the other way around. But I feel like sometimes too, because we have a poor understanding or the word term that I would use is we're ignorant, ignorant to this uh, notion of really determining what's the separating factor between job and work. Mm. Mm. There's going to be a lot of people that will be blessed by this. So mm. just if for a moment, if we can just touch on this subject where somebody's job today, that pays you money, but is it actually work? Mm. in a biblical or what we're trying to release today. Mm. So why don't you just take a moment, touch a little bit on that, just difference between those two. I think it's a mindset of uh, people like when they show up and we don't understand. Mm. When you don't understand um, mm. uh, between those, the, the difference between those two, uh, job and work. And job is basically uh, you're, you're working for money and mm. you're chasing money, you know, you're mm. chasing wealth. Yeah, you're working for wealth and work is actually working from wealth. So wow. when you understand and you rest in wealth, you actually, Come on. you can be creative. Your, your whole entire being has been deposited with the potential to be creative because our God is creative. He, he, he worked six days. Mm. He was being creative for six days. Just look around the universe and look at our, how things work and look at the planets, how they just, yeah. you know, they, they just orbit around right. each other and they don't clash into each other. It's just it's amazing. Like, I, I love the, the you know, the, the channel on nature <laughs> and I watch a lot of Richard Attenborough's uh, nature, uh, yeah. earth and planet all earth. that, planet earth. And yeah. So when you watch any one of those episodes, you'll be so flabbergasted. You'll be so just, just <laughs> shocked at how like the kingdom of ants, I was looking at how right. they all work Colony. together and um, they don't ever overstep each other. They're like, they're ants, yet they know, you know, the difference between so job good. and work. Yeah. Right? And that's why Jesus was able to say in Matthew 6, like those things that like plants, flowers and all, they don't ever worry. Like mm -hmm. the birds don't even worry. Yeah. They don't even have a storehouse. But yeah. yet, the Father provides for them. What more you? Mm. So he was trying to stress kingdom to them. Like if you fully understand the kingdom concept, where the source, the kingdom is the source mm. of where you come from, the kingdom of heaven. And so if you understand you came from there, which things are unlimited and, and really eternal and it's amazing, you don't strive. You don't mm. go to your workplace and you decide to strive like crazy yeah. and you go, oh, I'm only making, you know, 20 bucks an hour and, you know, this and that. And the industry average says I could be making 30. <laughs> right. The industry average does not determine how much you're going to make. Mm. The Lord of hosts, the one that owns everything, mm. determines that when you put to good use, the potential that Come you've on. been given, the That's ability it. that you have been deposited with. If you don't multiply and don't add value, how do you mm. expect people to notice the Eden in you? Wow. How are they going to see that? That's good. How are they going to see that you're operating from Eden and not chasing for Eden? Like the whole time, mm. we are just so messed up by Adam because Adam got kicked out of Eden, uh, basically out of the presence of God because he disobeyed, he yes. rebelled. Mm -hmm. right? There's a price to pay. Mm. Because that was spoken in the law. It says, if you eat from this tree, you shall surely die. So mm. let me tell you something. Eden is a place no one dies. Presence. If you're going to die, you're out. Mm. 
Okay, you yeah. <laughs> you're sitting on the out. Like you you basically have to go and learn. You go, you know, he was after Eden, he was the whole time chasing to understand life. He couldn't understand life anymore mm. because he was disconnected from so life. True. He was disconnected from life itself. Mm-hmm. The supplier, the true supplier, God. He is the supply and the supplier. So amazing. It's like, you know, when you fully understand kingdom concept, you, you, you're just working from mm-hmm. and you position yourself in that. You know, work from the kingdom of heaven mm-hmm. and you position yourself in the kingdom of heaven mm-hmm. to receive that. You're no longer trying to strive and trying to chase something like, oh my goodness, the whole time you can only think about your death. Mm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So your whole life is revolving around how to expand your mm. life through death. Mm. Right? It's like, my goodness. Did you know that God actually, <laughs> the supply of Die. He was the one that spoke die in the law in in Genesis. Come on. If you eat from this tree, you surely die. He's the one. He actually used, by the time Adam sinned and sin became the strength for die, became death. Death is the one that's holding you in a grave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God actually used that. Even in that sin and when he activated death, death, God actually used death to conquer death. Mm. So you know what I mean? Jesus actually came to die so that death is removed from us. Mm. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. He's using death to fight death. It's like I'm thinking of vaccination. Vax- like, you know, you, you're using the virus to fight the virus. <laughs> it's like it's amazing. Yeah. How God planned the whole thing. Like if you fully understand how he works, every principle, everything that he's taught us, it's actually you can translate that into into what we're doing today, into your workplace. The whole entire, I told you, we, we can predict success. We can also predict failure. Mm. It's predictable. Why? Because when you understand the concept of heaven, the, your constitution you came with from heaven, the Bible, you can use everything, every principle from the Bible at your workplace. You know, you can literally use every word from the Bible at your That's workplace. Mm. Wow. And people say, what? How, how can I do that? Yes, you can. You know, I was just reading about honey the other day. Yeah. And this group of four scientists in Israel, they develop honey. They that learn. <laughs> they learn from, you know, from understanding how God works. And, and they like, okay, well, the bee produces, because they were concerned about how people were harvesting honey mm. and how the bees were all getting killed yeah. because they are using chemicals to numb the honey. The, the bees and this and that. So something happens in that whole process where bees, it's so crazy. There's like 20,000 types of bees and there's only seven that actually can produce honey. Wow. Did you even know that? Like wow. I, when I heard that, I was like, my goodness. I saw the video. That's yeah. a minority. It's crazy. The minority is supplying all the honey in the world. Yeah. And they are dying. So mm. these scientists got together and go, you know what? Let's see how we can do this. So, okay, where does honey come from? Number one, the sweetness comes from nectar, from the flowers. Okay, the bee goes and sucks on the nectar. Yeah. And then the bee, after it eats that, has a protein in the system that converts that into honey. Huh. So all they did was they collected the nectar and produced the protein <laughs> and mixed those two and it became honey. <laughs> wow. It, exactly the same honey that bees produce. Exactly. Without killing a single bee, come mm. on, and allowing the bee to do what they're supposed to do, pollinate, and generate, mm. and cultivate. And so the thing is, everything works together. But we have to think beyond because we've been given that creativity by God. And imagine if those four scientists go to work and then they go, ah, it's just a job. I don't like my job. I'm getting paid below value. Mm. No. They think ahead now, I'm telling you right now, their technology, if they sell their technology to some other countries that can produce honey from not killing bees, people will buy that. Wow. See, that $20 job, an hour job, has now turned into 20000 an hour or something. Yeah. It's totally different. Why? Because you're using what ability God has deposited in uh-huh. you. Right? 
to think beyond, think creatively. So, but if you if you if you just want want to just think it's a job, then you know you're just resting six days and working, and working one. one. Wow! You're just like the third guy in the parable of talents that buried the talent in the ground because you think it's a job. No, it's work. Mm. Work. We know what is work. Work is manage. Yeah, managing. The expansion of his kingdom, everywhere that you tread your foot, you know your feet. Everywhere that you step, the the ground that you step on, wherever you're placed, wherever you're planted, you are to grow, you are to multiply, you are to add value. So don't just say it's work. Mm. No, God works six days. Something is wrong when the Creator that created you, you are the Creator, and you want to rest six days. How are you in a created in His image and likeness when you're doing the opposite? So I'm not saying striving. I do. You work from a place of abundance, understanding that God has deposited that in you already. Mm-hmm. Work in excellence. Jesus multiplied fish more than ever. The fish from catching nothing to nets tearing. Yeah. And then he went to the well and met the woman at the well. And the woman those days, their work was collecting water. Yeah. And he asked for a drink. And the lady at the well, the Samaritan at the well, said, "What? You know, you are a Jew. I'm not supposed to give you water. But you know, but then she was going. You know, and, and he said, you don't even know. Like, just paraphrasing. You don't even know what I have with me. The the water that I have. Yeah. It's like if you." Drink from the water that I give you, you'll never thirst again. Wow, he just outworked the lady, <laughs> right? The lady has to go every day to draw from the well to not get thirsty, mm. and he's saying to her, "I give you this water, you'll never thirst again." Who is working in excellence? Jesus. So I'm I'm saying like, think outside the box. Mm. Right? Don't box yourself in. And you know what the box is? The biggest box is religion. Wow. When you box God on into a box, yeah, you can't do this, can't do that. You know, no, you cannot speak in tongues. You cannot, you know, you can't prophesy. Yeah. <laughs> I was who, just, who, <laughs> I was just thinking about that too. Like, I mean, we we're for a moment we were touching on our secular work and trying to remind ourselves that it's more than just a secular work in that there's a purpose if we only begin to to receive that revelation where i know it's just job it's just my job my daily job i'm getting paid with this amount with you know with this kind of work but i'm doing this in excellence you touch on that and now you jump into religion when we see this all the time with the with the church with the more modern churches today, how does that relate, Pastor? Because I feel like some there's just there's, there's times where, man, we just gotta go to our Bible study and our Sunday service, and that's our part for the week. We're doing our <laughs> due diligence, you know, like. But I'm just even with that because I believe that when you read Genesis two, that applies for everything, whether yes. it's in that church field or everyday job. It's within that purpose that hey, you ju- you are just to manage and and excel, mm-hmm. excel in what the Lord has given you. Mm-hmm. So, but how 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 is the churches doing it today? Well, the churches are, are are doing what they do in the church in the church context, but the kingdom, the kingdom when church operates in religion, that's what they do. But the kingdom is bigger than the church. The kingdom was before right. the church. Come on. Let me tell you something. The kingdom was before the church. You know why? Because God spoke in Genesis one twenty six, right? He says, "Give man the dominion. Give them the dominion, right? The dominion. What the dominion That's means? It. The authority. authority. The authority to exercise the kingdom here on yeah. earth as it is in heaven. So, here's the thing. We to a point where we." Forget that when you have the presence of the Holy Spirit with you, you are 
to consistently be aware of that and worship Him wherever you mm. are going. Come on, twenty four seven of your life and three hundred sixty five days, you have to worship the Lord because the presence, the Eden, is with you. And in Eden, you're supposed to work. Mm. So if you're not doing that, that means you are not even aware of the presence of mm. God in you, except in church. So when you go to church, that's the only time you worship. Yeah. Uh, that's the only time Sad. that you you Sadly. You, yeah, uh, you have Bible study. It's okay. I'm not anti Bible study mm. or I'm not anti you know outreach and this and that. But I'm just saying, the kingdom is bigger. Mm. And you know, like I read to you Genesis one thirty one of the NIV. This is after God has built everything. Remember now, there was no worship team. Right. There's <laughs> absolutely no Bible study. Yep. There's no one preaching. Nothing. None of those things. Go there was bit. no church yet. You know. <laughs> And then it says this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. It says, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Not just good. It was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Hmm. After he had done all that, he said it was very good. Now, listen, there was no one worshipping. There was no pastors. There was no church worship leader. Yet yeah. he could say it was very good. Come on. You know why? He worked six days. It was very good. Are we working six days? Mm. Or are we just working on Sundays? <laughs> well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on. Even in that parable, Jesus was using like a businessman that was going away. It was again a marketplace. He was using gold, bags of gold. He was not talking about incense. He was talking about bag of, bags of gold. That's good. Got questions? <laughs> My brain right now, just processing it, even with like the whole differentiation between a job and what work is, I'm still there actually because it's like, it's so true. Even when you do Google the words work and job, it's so different Mm -hmm. because culture nowadays interchangeably use those terms Mm. to mean each other when they're not actually what it is. You know, for work, it's activity involving mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose Mm -hmm. or a result. Mm -hmm. Whereas a job is a paid position of regular employment. So you're, you're, Work mm-hmm. it, your, your your job is what gives you money, mm-hmm. whereas your work is what gives you purpose or you're mm-hmm. going towards a purpose. And I'm just like mind blown because even with the whole six day and the one day where, like you said, one of the biggest boxes we have is religion where, you know, for us sometimes, and this is something I've, I've been learning, where why do we as, as believers or Christian only have that time, yes, to minister, to evangelize on that one day yeah. when we're called to different facets of, of culture right now, yeah. What which needs the kingdom ever more so now than ever. And that's why, you know, even on this journey with a podcast, I'm learning that where you're not limited to to be that kingdom ambassador just in, in the realm of church. Mm. Like if you're in, you know, business or healthcare or, Mm. government you can infiltrate that and mm. actually do work mm. yeah. you know in in turn to the the job aspect is there but you know more so work you know even when we read genesis earlier genesis 2 out of those 15 verses work came up about five six times mm-hmm. 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 and i'm like okay if god yeah like you said if the, the heavy creator emphasis on yeah that. heavy yeah. emphasis on on work then there's clearly something that God is trying to tell us. And mm-hmm. I'm just still, you know, I, I wanted to ask this because, you know, somebody could be listening and they, it could be a reflection question or evaluation for them. You know, they hear that and they, it resonates in their heart where, my goodness, yeah, I go to my work. I, I understand what rest means. Um, but I'm just not too sure if I'm actually, if I'm, if I'm working six days. Because right now it sounds like I'm just, I'm showing up to my work faithfully, doing all that, but I'm stuck. It feels yeah. like this person. But even in that, it's like you know, your job can now be your work. 
but what's that really look like? Though? Yeah, mm. that you too. know, like what does that look like in terms of somebody that could be listening? I, I relate with that. I actually, I that that speaks to my heart. Uh, I have I have been working full time for the you know the last few years and whatnot, and it just doesn't seem. It seems though, it's just a weekend thing for me when I when I experience the things of God. How could we counsel those people that are listening mm. that that? You know, may just be able to receive some handles mm. or help in this subject. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, you know, your your key purpose is to work. Work to do what? To influence people into the culture of heaven. That's it. So when you have that influence, people actually suddenly look at you and go, okay, well, you know, it's something different about Josh, mm. you know? And you don't have to influence people by just keep yelling the name of Jesus. You huh. don't. <laughs> Come on. Because you have Jesus in you. Yes. And Jesus is working with you. Yes. He's giving you all the ability. He's given you all the, the, the potential. And he's just saying, you know, Holy Spirit is telling you, now follow me. Mm. Follow me according to my word. Follow me. Right? My word says, you know, work is, you know, work is, is um, um, honorable. The mm. Bible says that. Right, so you gotta pay attention to that because at work, if you're thinking, okay, I'm just going to work, but you gotta have greater purpose than that. Like, yeah. you know, are you inspiring people? Because mm. if you don't inspire people, you're never gonna influence people. If Come you don't on. influence wow. people, that's you're it. never gonna teach them the way, the way right. of where you came from. Mm. No one even wants to listen to you, Bible thumb. If you if you're just so lazy at work, yeah. mm. you just don't want to be creative. You just want to get out at five o'clock, <laughs> clock in and clock out, yeah. you know, and then, oh, I'm just getting paid so little. Right. Why do you think you're getting paid so little? That's it. Dun, 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 you're dun. getting paid by, <laughs> by, the, the, politics by the Lord of, of everything. Blame yeah. the union at work. <laughs> yeah, because you get paid according to your ability. Right. Oh, That's e good. Even that, like, my mind with the whole talents as well. And I, for anyone that knows, I've had this conversation with Pastor Tom in terms of our abilities mm. and stuff and how mm. we utilize it. And now, you know, building up to this point with, you know, when we all talked about it last week with abilities and now understanding what work and what a job is, it has completely changed my mindset on how to approach things. Mm. I mean, you know, we still work with excellence. That's always that's always the standard that we've talked about. But even in the way that we approach our our jobs, now you can now you just can't think about it as a job anymore. Yeah. You know, you're you're probably purposed in the position that you are. And as much as we complain and, and it might not be in the greatest situations, mm. but when I when reading Genesis two, he worked it. Mm -hmm. Like God mm -hmm. God pulled out the purpose out of it. Yeah. And so it just amazes me how yeah. he set such an example for us to follow. You, yeah. you mentioned there, like, I think one of the key thing in regards with influence, whatever job it is that we we're working with, working in excellence, you know, that's something that, you know, people would have to see that. Like, mm. it has to be that result. Yeah. And when they see that result, they understand, they, they begin to realize that, there's something's happening there or yeah. in that in that person. Something's where different. He's adding value and also bringing solution, too. Solution in such a way that it edifies or builds up the company that he's mm -hmm. representing or working mm -hmm. with. So it just it it does line up. Just understanding. Okay, you're making a difference where you're at. Mm -hmm. So in a way, there's a good reminder. At least for me, I'm, this is what I'm receiving. I'm taking with the subject today mm -hmm. that it it starts with. Going back with Genesis. Every everything that the king has given you, all solutions is in your Bible, in your constitution from where you came from, from heaven. And uh I'll give you a quick example. I was in Taiwan, I was talking to unchurched CEOs. It was a lecture wow. hall full of CEOs from all different backgrounds, pharmaceutical, wow. engineering, and this and that. And I went there, I did not say a word, I did not utter a single word that says Jesus. Not once. Mm. I didn't say I didn't I Ugh. didn't say the name of Jesus. Mm. Not once. But I was teaching them about principles. You know, layers and principles, yeah. right? Principle from the Bible, um, from the word. Yeah. About layers of intimacy and how Jesus had to say so many no's to say one yes. And, wow. and how how I drew that all out 
And I drew it into like a, you know, like a concentric circles I was teaching them. Mm. And at the end of the lecture, and by the way, they paid two thousand five hundred dollars to come. Wow! S- yeah, come listen to me. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Time I is money. Up, I showed up and it was like, oh, two thousand five hundred wow. US. Wow! Did you get paid though? No, oh. I, had, I had to pay my own ticket to fly there. <laughs> Never mind. But that's okay because I'm working for the king. Come on. That's you it. see, when you know where you're from and where you're working from, yes, uh, you're sent as an ambassador. You get paid by mm. yes. by the king. Mm. You know, it's like, not your economy. It's his God. economy. Yes. That's why Jesus says, if you just want the accolades of man, that's all you're gonna get. Yeah. Come on. But the treasure is where the heart is. Yes. Come on. So good. Right. So when I went there, so by the time I finished teaching. You can't believe how many CEOs came out and they were bawling, they were crying, mm. and they were asking me then, how did you get this, this wow. solution to our problems? You know, and I said to them, from the Bible. Wow. That's when you tell people where you get your solutions from. That's it. You don't go around saying, I have solutions from Bible the Bible. I have I solutions know. from the Bible. It's like I don't even want to read your Bible. Yeah. Anymore. Like I'm, I'm something else. I believe in something else. I don't. Even, I'm not even. I'm an atheist, right? Mm. So it's really important for us to understand who we are, where we're from, and what we're equipped with. Come on. And then you go to work. Just work. Just go to work. Come on. Hey. So good. Yeah. I am amazed. Yeah. So when they were inspired. They were influenced. Influenced, that's right. And now I'm still communicating with those guys. You Come, know. On. Come on. Wow. Yeah. Man, hope this bless somebody today. How the kingdom works, guys. Mm. But until next week, everybody, God bless. <laughs> <laughs>